crosstalk between the capacitors because uh, between adjacent capacitors. And if there is like what kind of I IOD is used there? You mean the crosstalk between capacitors? Yeah. Uh, not too much problem for the DRAM. Uh, so the capacitor, yeah, I don't, I don't recall any discussions on the crosstalk between DRAM capacitors. So, so the capacitors because uh, let me see, uh, the CS is relatively large, and then you just turn on one row. And then for the others, uh, one line is off, and then you don't have too much uh, cross talk there. We will talk about that later. We will talk about land flash. That's a problem there. Yeah. So also the storage node is basically the capacitor needs to be connected to the drain, right? So there's yeah. some metal there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, should be. but then there's some dielectric between the capacitors, like there. Between the capacitors, yeah, from capacitor, yeah. yes. So so. Yes, from in between, you, you, there will be some uh, dielectric. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is uh, the <coughs> transistor technology. So we talk about the capacitors. Now we need to switch to the transistor. So for the DRAM technology, uh, if you compare the DRAM access transistor which is this one T1C. This T is very different from the logic transistor used for example the SRAM. So because they have very different targets, for the logic transistor we need high speed. Right? <coughs> so and we need high density. And we have the uh, innovations this day is next in fact. The DRAM access transistor, the target is no leakage. And you only need same uh, uh, MOS, right? 1T1C, you just need MOS. So this no leakage is a key feature. And also, uh, this gate overdrive with VRNAM voltage, and some of you have noticed that the VPP for the VRNAM voltage is higher than the VDD. So you need overdrive the gate of this access transistor. So here, this is a typical uh, recess gate transistor for the DRAM. And uh, here you look at this, compared to the planar transistor, you see the difference. Planar transistor, you structure is something like this, and the channel is uh, here. And this way, you make <coughs> the gate into the substrate, and make the channel actually is uh, like this. So this is uh, called the recess gate. So any ideas why you want to do this? Any idea? We have low leakage. No leakage, yes, because leakage, you know, we talk about the transistor, short channel effect, right? <coughs> if you have a short channel, very hard to control the electrostatics and the source and the drain, you know, the, uh, the uh, barrier. The drain will affect the source barrier, and then you have the leakage. So if you make AO larger, right, the channel length, larger, then basically you return to the long channel device, then you don't have that short channel effect. So how to make the channel larger? This is the way. Because still you don't want to, you, you want to scale the transistor dimension. <coughs> so from source to drain, this footprint is to be small. But you can go deeper, right? So to take, take a route from source to drain, then effectively the L is larger. So you can have smaller leakage in this case. So this is DRAM access transistor. Of course DRAM will have the peripheral circuits, like sensor amp and so on. 
So those transistors are more like logic transistor, but at low, old technology load, maybe in like 65 nanometer or so. Is there a reason to prefer this over thin fat? Uh, we will talk about that in a minute. So you can also combine this with thin fat. <coughs> it does not uh, uh, conflict with each other. So again, the final point here is that DRA manufacturing is a very special process, okay, different from the foundry uh, who provide you the logic uh, transistors. So that's why the DRA manufacturing this day is only dominated by those big companies. If you look at the R cat as a fin, and the fin fat are the two, the channel is perpendicular in either to the other one. Uh -huh. So we'll talk about okay. how, to, how to combine the fin fat and the recess gate together. Uh, again, so this is uh, the comparison between the logic transistor and the DRAM and transistor. So logic transistor, you care about the speed, and here you care about the data retention, so that's why you need have small leakage. So here typically <coughs> leakage is like four orders magnitude smaller than the logic. And to make this, of course we have the resist gate, but also this TOX is higher. And also this larger TOX will help with this gate overdrive. You can drive a little bit larger voltage for your VTP. So this is uh, the scanning roadmap for the access transistor. And uh, from the old traditional planner transistor, the 90 nanometer, I think, resist gate is introduced. And then at 45 nanometer, we will see this so-called saddle structure which is the, the combination of the recess gate and the thin fat, and this barrel gate. <coughs> and eventually, uh, industry hope okay, to switch to this verti vertical gate <coughs> structure, which is not there yet. We are here. So this enables the scaling from 8F square to 6F square, and eventually, here 4F square. Okay. We will talk about that in a minute, how to achieve 4F square. So <coughs> this is a recess gate at 90 nanometer load. And uh, we have discussed the reason why we make this gate recessed. So this is to increase the effective channel length L. And if you do so, then here is the, uh, I think, the data retention time. You can improve previously. This is the data retention. Now you can improve the data retention to here. This is the tail bits of the uh, 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 bits with small data retention. <coughs> and then this is the uh, comp combination of the recess gate and the thin fat, because you know thin fat is also good to control the leakage. And then if you want to combine this, so this is a recess gate with a thin fat, so still this AA direction is a thin direction, and BB is a gate uh, like uh, surrounding the thin. But the gate is recessed here. So, for example here, actually this shape is like a saddle. If you really look into this, you know, saddle is a, you know, for the horse, right? So you think about that. It's like that horse, you know, the, the, it's like this. How to explain that? Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the, the combination, and also you can look at the uh, image or along the AA direction and the BB direction, you can see that in the AA direction, you can see the recess gate. Still, this is source to drain, like from this A to A prime. So this is source to drain, for example. So then the, still, 
the L is this one. And for the BB direction, if you look, this is along BB direction. If you cut along BB direction, then you will see the fin here. So this is the uh, side of structure. So basically, it's a combination of the recess gate and the fin fat. <coughs> And then, uh, at 32 nanometer, this buried gate concept was proposed. So the key idea here is that if you look at the coupling effect between the gate to the bitman contact, so this is a spacer region. And uh, you know, the, if you can reduce the overlapping between your gate to this bitman contact, then you can reduce the bitman capacitance. So that's why here, if you compare the original recess gate, so the word line is here, word line is metal, but then this metal under that is the gate, which is polysilicon <coughs> gate. And then this is the whole gate structure. And then here is the, for example, the bitman contact connecting to the bitman on the top. So then here this co region is overlapping. So you have a lot of this kind of uh, bitman contact to the gate or to the word line coupling. So the buried gate idea is that we get rid of this polysilicon and then only have the metal as the gate, which is buried underneath the bitman contact, which is here. It's a bitman contact, and then you have the bitman to the top. So then you can reduce this overlapping, and then reduce the capacitance. So this is uh, the buried gate. And uh, finally, this is uh, the ultimate goal for the industry to switch to this vertical transistor. And this was uh, a research paper by Samsung, not product. Okay, this is still research, not in volume production. But the idea is that if you can have okay a vertical channel transistor like gate all around, then the transistor is basically a cylinder here. So the transistor is a, like you have a pinner or silicon channel vertically. And then you can have the gate surrounding the channel. It's like this is a vertical channel and you have gate surrounding that. Then you can enable this 4F square because here, for example, this gate is your word line. And then this is like this word line controlling this gate surrounding the pinner of the channel. And then you can have a bit line connecting to this side. So it's essentially it's like uh, you have a vertical transistor here. So it's like a vertical transistor. <coughs> and then you have the bitman here, word line here, and then on this, on the other side, you directly stack that cluster here, which is that cluster. So in this case, you can have 4F square, because from the top view, then from this capacitor to capacitor, you will have the bitman to bitman. And from this capacitor to this capacitor, you have word line to word line. So as we discussed before, if you only have the wire, each wire gives you 2F. Right? Wire itself and the space in between, between wire. So it will be 2F by 2F, 4F square. So did you figure out 
which area is saved in this case. Why this is 4f square instead of 6f square? Which part is transistor. saved? No, transistor is still there. You recall what you have before. For example, here. Which part is missing? The speed that contact is no longer there. Because right now, the bit line contact is directly underneath this trans vertical transistor. It's only that contact, right? So this bit line contact here, you see, is directly underneath the cylinder. You don't need to have additional space to make that contact. Because previously, that contact, that bit line is on the top, right? You need to connect to that bit line. You need to make an open space to connect to the bit line. So that part is safe here. OK, so this is some research going on. And uh, I don't know if the industry uh, when will switch to this kind of structure. Or it may never happen because of the manufacturing or whatever issue, I don't know. But uh, uh, this is the direction to explore. Okay, so let's have a summary of the Dirac scaling. And uh, uh, so it's very difficult to scale D1 these days uh, below 20 nanometer because of those uh, challenges in maintaining the CS. And uh, I have to say that D1 replacement, let's say, a new technology to replace, uh, to replace D1 is not identified yet, so DRAM must be there. If you look at emerging technologies we are going to discuss later, none of them can replace DRAM. Okay. For last level cache, maybe STDM run can do that for S run. But for DRAM, as we see later, no emerging technology can replace DRAM at this moment. So I think uh, we can stop the lecture here, but uh, I want to spend some time to talk about the homework one. So don't record this.